Look up. No, 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 like way up. A little bit further. Can you even see it? Right now, some 408 kilometers over our heads, the International Space Station is being whipped at 28,000 kilometers an hour in circles around the Earth, carrying a permanent human presence in space since the year 2000. The ISS was designed and built in partnership with five space agencies from around the world. NASA in the United States, Roscosmos from Russia, JAXA from Japan, the European Space Agency, and the Canadian Space Agency. Each building and bringing up different modules until the last livable module was brought up and attached in 2011. The United States, Russia, Japan, and the European Union all brought up different modules for the station but it was the Canadian contribution that played a significant role in putting the whole thing together. And no, I'm unfortunately not talking about the heartwarming sing-alongs from Canadian astronaut Chris Hadfield. We're talking about Canada's most famous robotic and technological achievement, a program of historic proportions lovingly dubbed the Canadarm. In the 1980s, the National Aeronautics Space Administration from the United States was building its reusable space shuttle program and invited Canada to have a seat at the table, marking the start of a long and close relationship between Canada and NASA. These shuttles were going to be used to launch and repair satellites while in space, and they needed the flexibility to allow astronauts to get really close to orbiting satellites to make some of those repairs. The shuttles needed to have something that would literally reach out to grab the satellites, hold them in place while astronauts did their repairs, and then throw them back into their orbit once they were finished. Canada would be tasked with designing a tool from scratch that would work flawlessly in space with the dexterity of an actual human arm. And the Canadarm program was created. In order to withstand the harsh environments of space, the Canadarm would need some of the most advanced aerospace materials available, including titanium, stainless steel, and graphite epoxy. It would be insulated with a blanket of thermostatically controlled heaters to make sure that the inside temperature stayed safe. With nerves made of copper wire, bones made of graphite fiber, and muscles made of electric motors, the Canadarm is truly like a human arm. The arm is permanently fixed by one end to the shuttle vehicle, and it has two joints in the shoulder, one in the elbow, and three in the wrist, just like an actual human arm. The very first Canadarm was launched on November 13th, 1981, as a part of the STS-2 mission on the Space Shuttle Columbia. Once the bay doors open in space, the arm stretches 15 meters out. It's able to lift up to 30,000 kilograms on Earth, which is the equivalent of a fully loaded school bus, which then multiplies up to 266,000 kilograms of weight in the weightlessness of space, all with the same amount of electricity it would take to boil a kettle of water. The first launch on Columbia was an incredible success. Dr. Gary Lindbergh, the first program manager for the Canadarm program, said that, that first image returned back to Earth, the now famous inverted V with the Canadian wordmark displayed for the world to see. Canadian technology at its best. It was happiness, relief, and excitement all at once. The first Canadarm cost the government of Canada $108 million to design, build, and test the arm before they just gave it to NASA for the Columbia mission. However, NASA would go on to buy four more arms from Canada, one for Discovery, Challenger, Endeavour, and Atlantis, which resulted in over $700 million in sales for the program and another $20 million every single year in maintenance and support. The first, and arguably the most famous iteration of the Canadarm program, retired alongside the remaining of the space shuttle vehicles in 2011. One example of the Canadarm, the one that used to belong to Endeavour, is on display at the Canada Aviation and Space Museum in Ottawa, while Atlantis and Discovery still have their arms. However, the retirement of the space shuttle and the end of the first Canadarm program is not the end of this story. Canadarm 2, which is officially known as the Space Station Remote Manipulator System, is the second iteration of the Canadarm program, which launched in 2001, and it's the only one that's still currently in operation today. Canadarm 2 is an important part of the contribution that Canada made to the International Space Station project. This arm, which was 17 meters long, was extensively used in putting the space station together. It would reach out and grab new modules from the delivering space shuttle, and it would attach it to where it needed to go on the space station. Canadarm 2 has two identical hands on both sides of the arm. These can latch on to different anchor points around the space station or can do cosmic catches and grab onto things that are floating by. The arm has an ability to walk over itself, 
crawling end over end connecting to different anchor points, or it can be connected to the mobile servicing system, which is a 108 meter long truss system that runs the entire length of the space station, specifically designed to hold the cannon arm. The arm can be controlled inside the station from a resident astronaut or remotely from a CSA office in Longueuil. And since the station was completed in 2011, it serves as an important repair tool, it can grab incoming spaceships, and it can safely hold spacewalking astronauts so that they can complete repairs on the outside. However, Canadarm2 is most efficient when it's coupled with Canada's other contribution to the space station, Dexter, also known as the special purpose dexterous manipulator, sometimes just called the Canada Hand. Dexter is a humanoid looking two arm robot that is able to do some of the very complicated repairs on the outside of the station that otherwise would require an astronaut to go outside. Dexter was launched in 2008 and has since become an incredibly important part of the space station team. Unlike the arm, Dexter is entirely controlled from the ground in either Quebec or Houston and is designed to work independently of any of the resident astronauts inside the station. After launching in 2008, Dexter woke up for the first time after being connected to Canadarm2 on March 14th of that year. Two days later, spacewalking astronauts connected Dexter's two arms and they would spend the next year doing various tests on the system. Dexter's very first autonomous role was to unpack some pieces from the Japanese resupply ship Kunatori 2 while the astronauts on board were still sleeping. Dexter is incredibly tricked out. He's got high definition color TV cameras on all arms, an area to stow different pieces, a tool holster with every tool that you would possibly need to work on the space station. In 2011, more tools were added, including a wire cutter, a safety cap remover tool, and a multifunction tool with several different adapters. Canadarm2 and Dexter continue to circle the Earth on board the station and provide some of the most critical services to the space station team, being able to repair things while hurtling thousands of kilometers an hour through the depths of space. But again, these are not the end of the Canadarm story. The Canadian Space Agency is currently working on two new projects, Canadarm 3 and the Next Generation Canadarm. The Next Generation Canadarm, or NGC, is actually a program with four parts. First, you have a 15 meter long Canadarm that's designed to fit into smaller spacecraft, like the Boeing Starliner or SpaceX's Dragon rockets. It's designed to fold down into a box that's no more than five square meters in order to minimize the space used on board. Second, that arm can be coupled with a 2.5 meter long mini Dexter that can complete very complicated repairs to both satellites and spacecraft while in space. Third, the Canadian Space Agency is working on a mini Canadarm that can be used to dock two spacecraft together while in space. And last, a missions control center to control all three of those arms and to give astronauts an opportunity to practice bringing spaceships together in close contact. These flexible services will be critical for the future of operations in space, which currently are being launched by private rockets in the United States. So it's very likely that we'll see these next generation Canadarms taking flight on SpaceX, Boeing, or Virgin vehicles, and they'll likely be rented out to these companies and to global space agencies for individual missions in the future. Maybe the most exciting advancement in robotic space arm technology is actually Canadarm3, an artificial intelligence based robotic system that will stay permanently in space on board the Lunar Gateway. With the United States planning on returning man and bringing the first woman to the moon by 2024, NASA is currently planning the construction of the Lunar Gateway Station, which is a small station that will actually orbit the moon and serve as a waypoint for regular human travel to the surface of the moon. The gateway will be one-fifth of the size of the International Space Station, and it will serve as a scientific laboratory, a rendezvous point for missions going to the moon, a control center for permanent operations on the moon, and eventually an important resting stop for voyages towards Mars. Canadarm3 will be able to walk around the outside of the Lunar Gateway just like Canadarm2 does on ISS. It will maintain and repair the gateway, capture visiting spacecraft, move various modules around, and assist astronauts in completing spacewalks. However, Canadarm3 will be trained to do a lot of this work in these repairs completely on its own, because the gateway will not always be crewed, and the delay in communication between the Earth and the gateway caused by it going around the backside of the moon would make direct communication with the Earth nearly impossible. The arm will be fitted with a 3D vision sensor tool and six 360 degree 4K quality cameras, that will give the arm the ability to see what it's doing and to map the area around it. 
and brand new but highly sensitive sensors will be added to the arm, giving it a sense of touch, something that no other Canadarm in the past has had. And unique to Canadarm 3, it's going to have the ability to break itself down into smaller pieces so that it can be brought inside the Lunar Gateway Station for repairs. Canada is working hard with our international partners to help bring humans back to the moon, and Canadarm 3 continues to push the limits of what we thought was technically impossible. From 1981 to the moon, the Canadarm legacy is a testament to Canadian curiosity, capacity, and ingenuity. The Lunar Gateway will be the next major international collaboration in human space travel, and Canada continues to be a cherished and welcomed partner at the table. Without Canada's helping hand, it would have been a lot harder for us to reach for the stars.